Hello there, it's Tim, got a five tangle mic. Uh, today we're going to have a quick look at SWR. Is it important? What does it do? What does it measure? And uh, is it all that it seems to be? for joining me again and if it's your first time then welcome aboard uh, if you like what you see then click subscribe and uh, that bell button to notify you of any future videos I've also put a list of other channels uh, just down below in the comments section uh, these are other uh, channels I really enjoy watching and uh, I recommend them too for you so if you fancy having a look at them then feel free to have a look at them but watch my video first Anyway, um, SWR, well, do you know what? It's come to the point now, isn't it, where we've had so many new people join the hobby in the UK. Fantastic to see so many people uh, do their online test, get their mic seven calls and uh, join the fray. Brilliant, and I love working the new guys. Now, one of the things that causes a lot of debate and sometimes a bit of head scratching is SWR, standing wave ratio. If you come from the world of 11 meters CB, you're probably aware of what SWR is already. Um, and we all strive for the perfect match, don't we? We all try to get the SWR as low as we can. Uh, 1.5 to 1 seems to be the gold standard, but probably anything 2 to 1 or below is absolutely fine. So we all try and strive for that figure. And once we get down to like maybe 1.3, 1.2 to 1, we all think, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the antenna system is going to work brilliantly and uh, we're going to have a really good performing system. But does SWR really tell us the full story? What I want to do is give you uh, a couple of examples, really, of a system, a two-meter system. Obviously, we've got a rig, we've got the cable, we've got the coax cable, and we've got the antenna. Nothing more than that. The antenna can be anything, by the way. It can be a collinear, it doesn't matter what you've got. Let's pretend we've got like a diamond X30 or X50 up on the, on, on the chimney. Nothing special, okay? So what we have in this setup, then, is a two-meter radio. SWR meter, probably a foot or two away uh, from the radio, linked by a, a patch lead. Uh, two meter vertical antenna, say on the chimney. And that 20 meter run of RG58 coaxial cable. So having adjusted the antenna, we get uh, an SWR of two to one, showing on the SWR meter next to the radio. And we're quite happy to progress with that. So then we look at this from a situation when we have a two to one SWR reading at the rig end. So the two to one SWR results in about 11% of power being reflected back. That should mean therefore that we're sending out 89 watts out of our 100 that we're sending out in the first place, aren't we? Well, I'm afraid no. And why? We didn't consider the feed line loss and the impact this has. So with the amount of attenuation you get with RG58, with that length of coax, as you can see, even at 20 metres, the length we're using, we're still faced with a 3.6 dB loss. So then, that uh, 100 watts you're putting out from your radio has now been converted to 43 watts. So immediately, straight away, you've lost basically 57% of your output power because of the loss involved in that particular coax cable that you're using, the RG58. So 20 meters of that incurs a 3.6, that's 3.6 dB loss. That converts to 100 watts to 43 watts. But that's not all. If you remember, a 2 to 1 SWR provides about 11% reflected power. But of course, that's in a perfect world. When you have feed line loss, then that particular figure can only rise. And it will rise in the same way that any figure would when presented with a 3.6 dB attenuation. So effectively, instead of having 11% uh, loss, or in this case 11 watts based on 100 watts, a reflection I should say, you've now got up to 25 watts reflected power. So the whole thing starts to really snowball. So if we look at it then, 100 watts to start with, minus 57 watts, minus 25 watts. So by the time you actually get something out to the antenna, your antenna is basically radiating 18, that's right, 1818 18 watts out of that antenna based on the 20 meters of RG58 at the 2 meter frequency. So 18 watts, effectively 
uh, you might just go up to 20 watts by the time all that uh, RF gets radiated back and forth. But effectively, you're looking at around 18 to 20 watts. So you're looking at basically losing four fifths of your power. So that then equates, of course, to 7 dB. That's 7 dB loss. Now, in theory, that's just over an S point compared with a perfect match. But of course, um, S points, yeah. I think basically if you turn down your power from 100 watts to 20 watts in that sort of situation, uh, which is effectively what you're doing, that in the real world you often find that equates to a lot more than a single S unit. What this situation also reveals, what you need to consider, is that when you have a particularly lossy feed, like we have here at this particular frequency, using the RG58, that the SWR you see at the radio end, where you normally measure SWR of course, is going to be a lot different to the SWR you see at the antenna side of things. In this case, bearing in mind the amount of loss we have in the feed, and the fact we started off with a 2 to 1 SWR showing at the radio side of the feed line, by the time we get to the antenna, the true SWR is a lot higher. Now, because we've basically lost 80% of our power in this particular system, effectively, the SWR that that, an that antenna would show, if you hooked the SWR meter right up to the antenna, didn't, you know, basically negated any, any feed line length at all, you would see an SWR of somewhere, or an analyzer then, not just, not just an SWR meter, but you'd see uh, an SWR in the region of about 7 to 1 in this situation. So all that, uh, all that RG58 lossy cable has done in this situation, because it's so lossy, it makes you think the SWR is a lot better than it actually is. And in fact, even though you've got a reasonable match at 2 to 1, if you, even if you brought it down to 1.5 to 1, using RG58 for such a run, for such a high frequency, it's just going to make your system very inefficient. So then, if we go to the next situation where the same op has changed their coax to Hyperflex 10, and we'll look at that in more detail now, and they see their SWR has gone up, as it would, then they decide, right, well, I'm not going to throw this nice new shiny coax out of the way. I'm going to actually try and tune the antenna and bring the SWR down. And let's suppose they've actually tuned the antenna to get a two-to-one match. Maybe they want to bring it down a, a lower. Maybe it started to rain and gone back into the shack. They can't be bothered anymore. They're going to operate on a two-to-one SWR. So you think, okay, that's the same SWR then as the RG58 system they had up before. Same antenna, same transceiver, same run, same length of coax, just a different type of coax. So they've had to adjust the antenna when they put the Hyperflex, Hyperflex 10 into the system. Now they've got a 2 to 1 antenna, um, SWR again at the rig point. So what difference would that make? Let's take a look. So at 145 megahertz, uh, with a 20 meter run, the Hyperflex 10 coax has a loss of around 0.9 dB. This compares with 3.6 dB for the RG58 coax. So with the Hyperflex 10, we have 0.9 dB loss. Uh, that leaves us with 81 watts still being uh, radiated. Don't forget though, with a 2 to 1 SWR, we still have 11% reflected power. So that means we have a further feed line loss of around 13 watts, give or take. Take that away from the 81 watts, then uh, this particular uh, setup will still radiate around 68 to 70 watts. And if we're comparing loss, that's an overall loss of around 1.5 dB with the Hyperflex compared to 7 dB with the RG58. Uh, so given the frequency and the run of coax we have, the length of it, RG58 therefore will allow approximately 20 watts to be radiated. The Hyperflex 10 allows around 70 watts to be radiated. Well, I think there's three key themes here. First thing is to make sure that if you're going to spend money on anything, spend it on the coax. You know, we all get uh, caught up with getting the best radio that we can. Uh, sometimes we want to spend a bit extra money on the antenna, especially if you're putting up maybe a uh, uh, base station antenna for 2 and 70. But the coax is just so vital. Once you go above uh, the top end of HF into VHF, 
I've been to two and seventy two and seventy centimeters. Coax is just so important. So don't skimp on it. Don't skimp by using RG58 or RG8 or anything else. Go for the nice stuff. RG213 should be a minimum. Maybe go a bit extra if you can. Now I know it's going to cost, but as you can see, it'll make a heck of a difference to your station. So first of all, if you're going to spend money, spend it on your coax. The other thing as well is to try and keep coax runs as short as possible. The shorter the coax run, the less losses are involved. So again, think of ways in which you can route your feeder to as short a length as you possibly can. And of course, the other thing this has taught us is that really it's vitally important to pay attention to feed line losses. So do your homework, have a look at the sorts of coax that people suggest should be used in the higher frequencies. You know, RG58 can do a great job down on, down on 80 metres, maybe even 40 metres. But once you go to 20 metres and above, then the discrepancy between low loss and high loss coax really starts to take its toll. And once you get to two metres and above, then frankly, it becomes a major game changer. 20 watts or 70 watts in this situation, that should be a no brainer for us, shouldn't it? So feed line losses is something you should be looking at. Before you buy the coax, look and research into what the feed line losses are at different frequencies. You know, when we're looking at RG58 for a 100 meter run, it's 18 dB. The Hyperflex 10 I looked at, which is just one example of very good low loss coax, uh, is around four and a half dB. So you've got four times the loss in the skinny coax that you might have lying around that you think would do a good job for you. Well, on two meters and the higher bands, it certainly won't. There is, of course, one exception. The only caveat I can add to this really is that if you're operating mobile and you've got, say, four metres of RG58 going from your mag mount, your two metre mag mount into your radio, that's not going to make much difference at all. Sure, you could swap it for thicker coax, but when you're operating with really small runs of coax, then it's not really going to damage your, damage your station that much at all. So don't... Uh, don't fret about using maybe four or five meters of RG58 to two meters on the two meter frequency. It's not really going to matter a great deal. It'll give you the same sort of performance actually, as it's worked out myself, it'll give you the same sort of performance as the Hyperflex 10 example we've got here. Um, and it practically, you know, from a practical point of view, uh, that's probably the sort of coax you'd have to use. If you're actually going to be setting up a more permanent install in your car, uh, you can probably choose to run thicker coax. That would probably give you a bit of a better performance. But if, it's, if, it's, if you're using a, um, a mag mount, and nearly all mag mounts come with RG58 attached, then a 3, 4, 5 metre run of coax isn't really going to stop you having a lot of fun, especially if you're going up on a hill somewhere. You're still going to do very well with your station. So don't fret on that. But that is probably the only thing, the only exception that we can think of. If it's a home station, if you're operating with a decent run of coax, say 50, 60 feet or more, then frankly, you should avoid the RG58. Well, I hope that sheds some light on the mysteries of SWR for you. Uh, if you want to subscribe, then please do so. It'd be great to have you on board. And uh, click the notification button for any future videos. Also, put your comments below. It'd be great to hear what you think. Thank you then for joining me and uh, stay safe and uh, good luck with your antennas too, especially if it's your first setup at home. If you're putting up a two metre antenna, then uh, good luck for you. Good luck to you. And uh, remember, good coax. Good luck. 7-3 from G5TM. Bye-bye.